Thank you very much. Samsung, AIG, and NASDAQ each facing critical leadership questions right now. So what do their next moves say about the future generation of corporate leaders? Some insight now from two very powerful boardroom players, former Medtronic CEO Bill George, who serves as director at ExxonMobil and Goldman Sachs. He is also a professor at Harvard Business School and former Microsoft COO Bob Herbold joins us. Bob currently runs an executive training consultancy and serves on the boards of directors at Agilent Technologies. What a team. Great to have you here, guys. Thank you so much. Thank Bill, I'm going yeah. to start with you. Um, let's start with Samsung, because that, I think, is such an interesting um, company in and of itself, the way it goes up against Apple. Uh, there's, there's been talk of patent infringement. Um, there's all sorts of issues to talk about at Samsung, but there are a lot of people who are wondering whether they have the right secession plan in place. Well, this is basically a family-owned company. Uh, Chairman Lee took over from his father. Now he's in ready to pass the reins over to his son, J.Y. Lee. Uh, I think it's a logical transition. J.Y. actually went to Harvard Business School, is well-trained, well-positioned for the post, and I think the timing is right. He's been in the job 27 years. But Samsung has done an amazing job, and you'd have to say Chairman Lee is the uh, Bill Gates of, of Korea, and they've done a fantastic job competing with Apple. They're the only ones that have, so I think you have to give them a lot of credit. But I do think it's time for a transition, so I feel badly about his heart attack. Maybe he should have transitioned right. a few years ago, but I think it is time. Bob, would you agree with most of what Bill said? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, I'd only add one element, which is uh, technology companies are very, very tricky. Uh, even when you have a seasoned insider, uh, at times, you don't have the technology spark that you need. There are a lot of right. people who raise questions in this regard, in regard to Tim Cook at, uh, at Apple. Right, and, but, but also the new guy at the top at Microsoft, Bob, as well. Absolutely. It was a long, drawn-out, and very, very difficult uh, decision on their part. Uh, primarily for the, the fact that you've, you've got two needs with these technology companies. You need a first-class CEO, but you need a technology leader. And you look at companies like IBM and you say, wow, uh, hmm, this must be a tough task to, uh, to line up that kind of talent because, frankly, they're struggling. Yeah, they yeah, are. Sue, and, just, and the CEO just, admits that, too. Just, if I may add a comment to Bob, I agree with you totally, Bob. I think we're seeing, for that reason, companies are staying inside. Frankly, for your former company, I was very pleased that they chose Satya Nadella. I think Alan Mulally is one of the great CEOs of the world, but he's not a tech guy at all. And I think they were very mm -hmm. wise to stay inside. And you saw what happened to your former Microsoft competitors down Hewlett Packard with four outsiders in a row, none of whom have really proven <laughs> that they can master that tech giant. So boards are shifting, and we're seeing it very much at HBS now that our CEO program for new CEOs have gone from about 50-50 outsiders versus insiders to uh, more about 90-10 of staying inside right. and finding somebody who's yeah. operationally sound. Bill, let me stay with you, and then, Bob, I'll get your take on AIG. I mean, Bob Ben Moshe um, inherited an extremely difficult situation and an extremely large company, and he has managed to right the ship quite nicely, looking at that stock price now up almost 2% today. Mm -hmm. When you see these bankrupt companies, uh, they almost have to go to the outside to bring in fresh blood. General Motors did. And uh, the outsider, if he does it well, even Lou Gerson at IBM in preparing Sam Pomisano, I think it's important and they prepare the insiders. So credit to Bob in preparing Jay and Peter to effectively compete for the job, each running about half of AIG and uh, made it the better person win. And I think it's a very logical process. But the thing you see now is boards are pressing upstream. We need to have the candidates rather than waiting till the last minute and say, oh, we don't have anyone, let's go outside. I think right. it's very wise and it's a, a good trend. And Bob, if I can finish up with you on the NASDAQ, it appears as though they are going to the outside and they are starting a little earlier than some people thought they would to Bill's just previous point. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very, very difficult task. Uh, you not only have to get a, a good CEO candidate, you have to have a person that you judge can uh, adapt to the culture quickly, can learn the customer set, can learn the industry set, uh, can uh, gain the confidence of the peers and uh, the subordinates. And uh, 
there are a lot of dimensions and consequently risks to, uh, to reaching for the outside. And I think that's why Bill's statistics uh, are bearing up these days. It's, uh, right. it's a very risky proposition. Well, Adina Friedman has two years uh, in advance to take a look at the business, and that's kind of an interesting business because it's a financial services business, but it's very much a technology business as well. So it kind of fits in along with the Samsungs and the Microsofts of the world. Yep. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. Si. Thanks, Sue. Up to Thanks, you. Bob. Sue, thank you.